What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with the remainder theorem. So when f of x equals 3x to the power of 3 minus kx squared minus k squared x plus k to the power of 3 is divided by x minus 2, the remainder is 16. We have to find all possible values for k. So another remainder theorem question where we're finding constants. This was actually sent to me by a student. So it was a fairly unique one. Wanted to make a video for it. Now, as I've done previously with remainder theorem questions where we're finding constants, what you want to do is just create a general statement before getting into the algebra. And so notice we have this polynomial f of x, and we're told that when it's divided by x minus 2, the remainder is 16. Now, just in general, by the remainder theorem, if f of x is divided by x minus a, well, we know that the remainder is equal to f of a, right? Or if it's divided by, for example, ax minus b, If there's like another coefficient in front of the x, not just the one, then the remainder uh, would equal f of b over a, right? Just as a quick reminder. But in this case, it's just a one over here, so we could use this. So it's divided, f of x is divided by x minus two, right? We could plug in a two for the a here. So that means the remainder is gonna equal f of two. And notice that we're given the remainder, it's 16. So what we can do is we could say the general equation we can make is f of two, in this case, is equal to 16. Right? In this particular question, that's the general statement. And that's all we need. Now we just have to plug everything in and then solve for that k value. So what we would do is first plug in two for all the x values, so we'd have three times two to the power of three minus k, two to the power of two minus k squared times two plus k to the power of three, right? And that's equal to 16, right? From here to here, I just plugged in two for all the x values. So from here, what would happen? Two to the power of three is uh, eight times three would give us 24. 2 to the power 2 is 4 times negative k would give us minus 4k. 2 times negative k squared would be minus 2k squared plus k to the power 3 is equal to 16. And now notice we just have a polynomial equation to solve um, with the variable being k. That's what we're solving for. So what we can do here is we can bring everything to the left side. Let's keep the, notice the leading coefficient is going to be 1, and I want to keep the leading coefficient positive. So I'll put the k to the 3 there. Next would be minus 2k squared minus 4k, and then bring the 16 over. 24 minus 16 would give us positive 8 and that's gonna equal zero. And now you just gotta solve this here. So this actually factors uh, smoothly, and actually luckily we can factor this by grouping, but if you didn't, then you can just use the factor theorem, right? So you could try different values for k, plus and minus one, plus and minus two, plus minus three, keep going until you make it equal zero, and then you could do long division. But in this particular case, What's nice is we could take out a k squared from these two, so we'd end up with k minus two, and then we could take out a negative four from these two, we'd end up with k minus two. Again, that's not always gonna happen. It's not always gonna factor like this. Sometimes you're gonna have to use the factor theorem, uh, and that takes a little bit more work, but in this particular case, it does work with, uh, with grouping. That's always what I look for first. Does it factor with grouping if you get like a cubic polynomial? And then if that doesn't work, then unfortunately, you then have to do it the longer way with the factor theorem. But in this case, it works because notice this bracket, this bracket are the same. We could take that bracket out and we'd be left with k squared minus four equals zero. 
Okay, so then continuing this over here, k minus 2, k squared minus 4 equals 0. Notice the k squared minus 4, that factors into k minus 2, k plus 2. That's a difference of squares, right? And then notice this and this, same factors, so we can just combine them, make it look nicer. That would be an order of 2. And then we end up with that right there. And then from here, we know that this has to equal 0. That means k minus 2 has to equal 0, so k can be 2. And then k plus 2 has to equal 0, meaning that k would be negative 2. And so those are the two possible values. right? And then if you have time, you could check your answer. You could plug in 2 for k. You'd get a certain polynomial. And then C, does f of 2 equal 16? You can plug in negative 2 for k. Just be careful with like your signs and stuff. Get the polynomial there. And then C, does f of 2 equal 16 for that particular polynomial for the case where we're letting k equal negative 2? And you would see that it does work out, right? So make a general statement like this. Just do the algebra. Those are the two k values.